Good afternoon and welcome to the Downing Street press conference. I'm joined this afternoon by Jenny, Chief Medical Officer. As Housing Secretary, I'm going to set out our comprehensive plan to safely restart, reopen and renew the housing market. But first, I want to update you on the latest date of the coronavirus. 2,094,209 tests for coronavirus have now been carried out in the United Kingdom, including 87,063 tests carried out yesterday. 229,705 people have tested positive. That's an increase of 3,242 cases since yesterday. 11,327 people are in hospital with 19, down 15% from 13,273 cases last week. And sadly, of those tested positive for coronavirus across have that's an increase of 494 fatalities since yesterday. These figures include deaths in all settings. Before turning to the housing market, I want to remind people of how we will address this phase of our fight against COVID-19. Firstly, and if we could turn to the first slide, thank you. In order to monitor our progress, we're establishing a new COVID alert level system with five levels, each to the level of threat posed by the virus. The alert level we base primarily on the R value and the number of coronavirus cases. And in turn, that alert level will determine the level of social distancing measures in place. The stricter the measures, the social distancing measures remain critical in our efforts to control the virus. Throughout the period of lockdown, in March the 23rd, we've been at level four, meaning a COVID-19 epidemic is in general circulation and transmission is high or rising exponentially. Thanks to the hard work and the sacrifices of the British people in the lockdown, we've helped to bring the R level down now that we are in a position to begin moving to level three, we will do so in careful steps. If we turn to slide two, we've set out the first of three steps we'll take to carefully modify the measures and gradually ease the lockdown. And begin to be a disaster that could overwhelm the NHS. After each step, we will closely monitor the impact of that on the R and all the available data will be used and we'll only take the next step when we're satisfied that it's completely safe to do so. The first step from this week will be as follows. Those who cannot work from home should now speak to their employer about going back to work. You can now spend time outdoors and exercise as often as you like. You can meet one person outside your household or public place, provided that you stay two metres apart. The second step from the 1st of June at the earliest, as long as the data allows, we will aim to do the following. Primary schools to reopen for some in small to start to reopen and where it's safe to do so. Cultural and sporting events to take place behind closed doors without crowds. And then step three, no earlier than the 4th of July, and again, only if the data says it's safe to do so, we aim to allow the following. More businesses and premises to open, including potentially 
those offering personal care, such as leisure facilities, public places, and places of worship. And on that last point, I've been speaking to faith leaders and will convene later this week a task force to establish and how can open safely for some of the practices uh, where social distancing can take place, such as private prayer, potentially private prayer being able to be earlier than July the 4th. Many of these businesses and organisations will need to operate in new ways to ensure that they're safe and we will work with those sectors and individuals on how to do this. If we turn to the third slide, having taken the first step in carefully adjusting some of the measures and our advice to people on what to do, we've also updated what we are asking people to do, which is to stay alert, control the virus and to save lives. For many people, the appropriate course still means staying at home as much as possible. But there are a range of other actions we're advising people to take when they do go out, work or other activities. Limiting contact with other people, keeping distance when you do go out, two metres apart wherever possible, washing your hands regularly, wearing a face covering when you're in an enclosed space where it's difficult to be socially distant, for example, in some shops or on public transport. And if you or anyone in your household has symptoms, you all need to self-isolate. This slide sets out some of the activities you can now do. And as I'll come on to later, you'll see that you can now move house. On the fourth slide, if everyone stays alert and follows these rules, we can control coronavirus by keeping the R down and reducing the number of infections. This is how we will continue to save lives and livelihoods, and we can begin as a nation to recover from coronavirus. We begin however, that we cautiously open up parts of our economy where it's safe to do so. Now, earlier today in Parliament, I made a statement out our clear, coherent and comprehensive plan to restart, reopen and renew the housing market and our construction industry. I'm sure this will be of interest to many people at home who are hoping to move house and I'd like to set out what this means in more detail. From today, anyone in England can move house if they follow the new guidance that we've published on gov.uk. When the lockdown was announced in March, we changed the rules. People could it was really necessary. That meant that more than 450,000 buyers had to put their plans on hold. And each month, 300,000 come up for renewal as well. A significant proportion of these will result in people needing to or wanting to move home. The pressure to move for some was becoming acute with serious legal and financial and health implications. During an already difficult time, these people have been stuck in limbo. Now they can carry on with their house moves and add some certainty to their lives. So from today, estate agents Offices can reopen, viewings, whether virtual or in person, are permitted, show homes can open, and removal companies and the other essential parts of the sales and the lettings process are started immediately. For most people, moving home is not a luxury. People decide to move home because their personal circumstances change. The changes that I've announced today safely in order to control the virus and to protect the public. We've published very detailed guidance informed by public health advice to explain how this can be achieved with all parties observing high 
measures, social distancing guidelines. People have asked, why would they be able to look around a stranger's home but not visit their parents or loved ones at home? Now, I understand why this may seem at first glance, especially when people have been separated from their loved ones for so long. But our guidelines make clear that in the first instance, viewings should happen virtually. When viewings do happen in person, we a plan to ensure the of everybody involved in the property itself. Those considering moving in and the estate agents and letting agents. These requirements include visits being by open house viewings should not be taking place and speculative viewings where buyers or tenants are not serious yet are highly discouraged. All parties should follow strict social distancing guidelines. All internal doors should be opened if possible. The occupier should vacate the property for the duration of the visit, going out for their daily exercise, going out to the shops or standing in the garden if that's possible. All involved in the process should wash their hands Upon entering the and in place, all the surfaces in the property should be thoroughly cleaned. There are, of course, exceptions. For those who are self isolating or have coronavirus, they should not be moving or going or allowing tradespeople or professionals into their home. Where this is the case, all parties involved in house buying or selling should prioritise amicable, sensible arrangements to change the move dates for the individuals concerned. That's been happening across the country in recent weeks and it will continue. We would also ask those who are clinically vulnerable and those who are shielding to consider very carefully their personal situation and to seek personal and specific medical advice before or to proceed with moving home. If you're in this situation and you decide that you must go ahead, all professionals involved should be made aware so that they can put in place any additional precautionary measures and further legal to make sure that the transaction goes as smoothly as can be expected. A vibrant housing market means more than buying and selling homes. We need to get and Britain needs that. It's something that this government has always been committed to, something that our ambitious First Homes programme will do later this year with a 30% discount on new homes for key workers, including nurses and teachers and police officers, as well as local first-time buyers. We want them to be ready as soon as possible. And reasons why I'm keen to get construction up and running. To help with this, I'm today announcing further steps to support safe house building by allowing more flexible working hours on construction sites as appropriate for Allowing supply to extend their working hours, again with immediate effect, to 9 pm Monday to Saturday in residential areas and beyond that in non residential areas, and setting out a very clear government position that these applications should be approved by local councils unless there are very compelling reasons not to do so. Varied start and finish times will make it much easier for sites to observe social distancing. Off public transport like the Tube in London and keep Britain building. There are countless examples of the industry behaving responsibly and proactively during this pandemic. I'd like to thank Taylor, who have now got construction safely underway on the majority of their sites and have started removing staff from the furlough scheme and getting back to work on full pay. They are offering a discount of 5% to staff workers on new way to recognise the contribution that our frontline heroes are making across the country. So thank you to them. It's also time that the planning system makes more use of digital 
digital technology to operate remotely and efficiently during this pandemic. I'm determined that the planning inspectorate is at the forefront of this work. I welcome the inspectorate now undertaking its first ever virtual hearings. I'm asking them to make all hearings virtual within weeks so the planning system can resume and be made more permanently accessible and user friendly. This is the most comprehensive restart of an industry. With few, if any, transactions, there is no visibility and no precedent with which to accurately judge the state of the housing market. It tells us that in every economic recovery in modern British economic life, the housing market has been key to recovery and revival. As Housing Secretary, I do everything I can to support the millions of people employed in the construction and the housing industries, to help their sector bounce back whilst always prioritising their safety and well-being. Almost 100 have already signed up to the Charter for Safe Working Practice, pledging that they will share the responsibility to ensure that their sites operate safely and in accordance with government advice. I'd like all of them to encourage the industry to join them. Today we reopen, we restart and we renew the housing market and the construction industry to protect life, save jobs and to begin rebuilding our economy. Thank you. I now hand over to Dr. Harris. Jenny. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to run through some of the slides um, which show uh, we've been doing in uh, managing social distancing. Uh, this slide represents the changes in our transport use. Uh, it's compared to uh, traffic and buses from uh, earlier in the year, usage and rail from last year. And you can see that all of the different types uh, the uh, reduction in use has been more than 50%, except, of course, in our heavy goods vehicles, which are transporting uh, essential uh, items for us. And it's important for us to watch that. It's been uh, a real long indicator. 